Hey guys, it's Jess. I'm back this week for another video. We're gonna be talking about Greece and why the mismatched couple looks so good. We're gonna be talking about the fashion that works when it's just totally not the same and the polar opposite fashion, but together in a couple. Why do we love this? Why did Hollywood create it? The science definitely doesn't back this up. It's not really based on any reality. So without further ado, let's get into it. They're in different universes, different friend groups, and for some reason we love this. We love it when two people are together that have totally different styles. I mean, I gotta admit, I love it. It's visually very appealing to the eye. Why is it we love a sweet, timid, cute person with someone that's chad, buff, tough, I don't know. For some reason it looks good. So we're gonna be exploring the fashion in Greece that works so well together, even though it's polar opposites. Obviously we have Danny, we have Sandy, also known as Sandra D, and they are polar opposites. They're in different universes, their friends are very different, their clothes are very different, their styles are different. They identify with different subcultures. I mean, I think it's adorable. Obviously, a lot of people have problems with this movie and didn't age very well, but let's just take it as it is. It's from the 70s, set in the 50s, very traditional world, you know, very... It's adorable that we have the rockabilly, edgy biker guy with this cottagecore cute chick, Sandy from Australia. I want to talk mainly about the yellow pastel on Sandy. I think she's absolutely adorable with this look. She clearly really likes the happy pastel light colors. They never demand any attention. They're very light, they're very soft. Very clearly she identifies as the person that's soft, timid, doesn't demand attention. The colors of her clothes very much reflect this. I think she's adorable. We have to appreciate her for this. We also see her in a white plaid dress. I mean, the silhouette, so 50s. But even throughout the rest of the film in the diner, she's wearing that Letterman cardigan uh, from that ridiculous guy that she's with in the diner. And she's wearing the dress that's this plaid kind of print and a big skirt. I mean, it's just stunning. So we know right off the bat, Sandy loves pastel colors. She's soft, she's timid, and she's very traditional with her silhouettes. Her hair is always very clean, typically out of her face. We see her clothes very much reflect her personality and who she sees herself to be. Everyone makes fun of her, calls her Sandra D. She's conservative and cute. She doesn't really take risks. Her clothing is also like that. My favorite outfit of Sandy's in Greece is the yellow dress in the diner scene when she's with Danny. Like even these little bows and ribbons around the big skirt. And then we see Danny always pretty much wearing his traditional biker ensemble. The slick back hair, of course. <laughs> Uh, well, listen, I'll pick you up. Very 50s rockabilly, you know, we see him with this biker jacket with the T-Birds on the back because he's in that high school gang, I guess. <laughs> and he's wearing the slacks, very high up on the waist, also very 50s, and the white black T-shirts. He doesn't really go outside of that. I mean, it's pretty much just black, white. Now we've established Sandy and Danny, two very different people. Their fashion is just like polar opposites. So of course they fall in love. We see them with a lot of tension and kind of struggling to figure out, do they want to be together? You know, how are they going to be together? The typical high school romantic drama. My favorite scene is when we see this polar opposite of their worlds come together in the diner scene when they're like, all right, let's go. And you see her with that bright yellow cottagecore dress and her cute little bob. And then we see him with this biker black jacket, the black grease back hair, the slacks and the white t-shirt. That's when we know, hmm, they look good together, right? But they're polar opposites. So Hollywood thinks they look great together, but what does the world say about the realistic dynamics of two polar opposites being together in a relationship or even being into each other. So let's explore what BBC has to say about this. People have long lived by the opposites attract type of thing, the introvert falling for the extrovert, the bad boy for the straight A student. It's been lodged in popular culture, they're saying, 
and it has been for years. I mean, obviously we can see in Greece, it's a perfect example of this whole dream that we have of opposites attract and, you know, the tough boy with the cute girl and it's just all a daydream, right? Because in reality, various studies have shown friends and romantic partners tend to share core beliefs, values, and hobbies. People tend to be attracted to or trust those with similar physical features, and some research suggests people go for others with like personalities. So because we know their style also very much ties into how they view their personalities and themselves, we know that the idea of two very different people, even in how they dress, cannot be based so much on reality. I mean, my personal take on this is that in real life, if we see somebody wearing something that we like personally, or maybe we wear that style ourselves, maybe a color that we really like and we see someone, we are going to be attracted to that. That's very natural, right? Once two opposites are together, it's just this juxtaposition. It's, it's, it's aesthetic, it's like, add that to my Pinterest board type of thing. I don't know, yin and yang, it's apples and bananas. It's just something we like the idea of. It's very human, I would say. Um, maybe we can't really identify the exact thing we love about it other than it just looks good. <laughs> I'm sure almost everybody can agree with me that the final scene is one of the best parts of the whole film. It is the reveal scene. Talk about it, stud. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty iconic, obviously, the the whole transformation. In the scene prior to the, the reveal scene, we see her singing about being Sandra D. She becomes self-aware that she's the goody two-shoes, and she's not so much into this because she likes Danny and she wants to draw him in. So that is when we see her go to her friend Frenchie, and she's like, all right, let's do something about this. I'm going to transform myself to draw in my love interest. And that's when she has the biker jacket with the red silk lining. We see her with the red lips, the red nails. And then we see Danny with his all black, his t-shirt with the sleeves rolled up. We see him with the black slacks, high-waisted, and the grease back hair. It's just all picture perfect. And we do see a bit more of realism in that moment. Before she reveals her makeover transformation, we see him wearing a ridiculous Letterman sweater <laughs> because he admits to his friends, I'll do anything to get her. And so this is very based in reality that at some point when you're interested in someone else, you gotta compromise a little bit to make them want you to draw them in. So even when they're in matching all black ensembles at the end, we see that they look great together. They just have great dynamics. I would say maybe their personalities have a lot of similar traits that kind of drew them in to each other at the beginning. And the fact that they compromise their style for each other at the end, I mean, we've all done that at one point with somebody we care about. Compromise, sacrifice, we know it. You know, love requires it, beauty's pain, love is pain, it's all pain, you know, that's love, that's life. So why does Hollywood love opposites attract? Well, it's just, it looks great, man. We don't know why, so let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Even if you don't have a love interest, if you're single, by dressing how you like and in things that interest you, you will draw in certain friends and the right people in some cases with your personal style by telling them this is who I am, this is who I'm gonna be, no compromise, you know, that's who I am. So if you like it, come and get it. If you don't want it, then stay away because that's who I am and this is how I look. <laughs> so, clothing has so much power in relationships. It gives us the ability to tell other people who we are effortlessly just by existing in the clothes that we like. So. That's Grease, that's our film for today, another costume analysis, and an espresso, of course. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any thoughts on Grease and the costumes, the fashion, the characters, please let me know in the comments below. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.